Hey everyone, this is Nitro. In this video, I'm going to be talking about what has been added with the September 10th update for the international server. So this update is one of the minor updates, but surprisingly, the new additions are things that you would very likely want. Let's start off with this store. Okay. First, the gift pack for this week is the Ultra Value Weapon Gift Pack, which is garbage. It's a random SSR weapon for 50 bucks. No way. Okay. However, the store has two soldier skins, which you may want to purchase because these are very, very nice looking soldier skins. One of them is for heavy infantry, the divine speed skin, and the other one is for the Amazon champions. They only cost 28 skin vouchers, but skin vouchers are going to be very rare in the upcoming few months due to the sheer number of skins being released. So whether you buy them, in my opinion, should depend on whether you actually use those soldiers. It's also worth mentioning that for Amazon Champions, if you've been playing since I think Season 2 or Season 3 of Apex Arena, you should already have a skin for those Amazon Champions. And let me just find someone who has Amazon Champions on them, like Yulia. Okay. So the Amazon Champion skin looks like this, the Bracer skin. So. The Bracer skin definitely is not as nice looking as the new soldier skin, Gallantry, but it is an option to use. So whether you um, buy that skin is ultimately up to you. Right? So it's that's very much worth mentioning. I am not. I don't have my Amazon champions leveled up. It's highly unlikely I'll have them leveled up anytime soon. So I'm going to skip that soldier skin. But I will pick up the heavy infantry one because while I currently don't use Heavy Infantry, it's very possible that they're actually one of the soldiers I'm going to level up eventually. Um, heavy Infantry is actually shared by a lot more characters than I realized, like Ledin, Elwyn, Chris, Matthew, Estelle, you know, Sakura, even, uh, yeah, even Sigma, Yulia, Yusuke, Deedlet, right, Reen, and so on. Even Ares has them. So there's enough characters that can actually use Heavy Infantry to the point where I actually decided to, that skin is probably worth buying. Yeah. Like, Heavy Infantry and Highland Warriors are probably the two soldiers I would level up to level 10 if I get this training ground upgraded at this point. And maybe the Cyborg Warriors. But it just shows that there are quite a few decent infantry soldiers and Heavy Infantry is actually one of them. All right, so that covers the new store skins, and they were just soldier ones. Next then, let's talk about the events that have been added, and there's two of them. The first one is of course a summoning banner, right? The Actually, they're both summoning banners, but the first one is the Mythical Realm Destiny Summon. So this particular summon has three characters, which means the first SSR hero you summon is guaranteed to be a event banner hero you don't have yet. So if you're missing Rainforest, Zerida, or Gizaroth, this banner may be well worth summoning for. Well, if you have Zerida and Gizaroth, I'm not exactly sure you want Rainforest, frankly. But um, yeah, kind of up to you on this one. I mean, it's always nice to get a guaranteed new SSR, so that would be the reason to summon on this banner. Other than that, the other banner is the Transcender's Legacy. So I've talked about this banner before in a previous video, but I'll talk about it again now. So this is an equipment banner with four items. The Frostfire Crown, the Ancient Plate Armor, the Scepter of Divinity, and the Insidious Pendant. Of these four, the only one that you may actually truly want is the Insidious Pendant, and that's only if you use Omega in PvP. Even then, it, I'm not 100% sure it's worth summoning on this banner just to get it. Because the other three are much more optional items. It's really just trying to get the Insidious Pendant. You may have to use a lot of vouchers to summon on this to get it. So it's a very, very risky summon. Just as an example, I'm if I take a look at, like let's say, the system screen. Oh, unfortunately, it restarted. But yeah, I saw someone who summoned like, he summoned, I think I saw six different SSR gear that the current, that person got and he didn't get a single Insidious Pendant. So it's this one, given that there's four SSR equipment on this and only one of them is good, it's truly, truly very, very luck-based. 
If you really want to know what they do, you can actually go into the equipment page to roughly see. You know, what they, it tells you what they do at level 20 anyways. So the Scepter of Divinity, provi it doesn't provide any int increase. Okay, So it's a hit point increase one, 5% hit points at level 50. The effect is, when on terrain with no defensive bonus and using range skills to initiate battle, unit range is increased by 1. And this effect overrides effects that ignore melee damage reduction. So primarily, you can say this just, if you use an attack skill, you have an extra range with this. And since it's unit range, your soldiers also get that increased range. Very, I'm not sure there's a use for this item at this time. You know, there may be a character in the future that absolutely wants it. R right now, it seems to be more of a Mimi weapon than anything else. Right. Given that you're giving up damage for one extra range. But maybe there may be certain maps where you want someone with three range or even four range, as the case may be. You know, it's interesting to note, right? The Scepter of Divinity, since it applies to when you use attack skills, if you're using, let's say, young Jessica, and she gets another increased range for her single target strikes, she is kind of ridiculous in that sense, although she won't do as much damage, right? So with Divine Bestowment, she already gets an increase of 3 range. So she's already a 5 range character. With that, with the addition of that weapon, theoretically if she's using Fireball and Cleanse, she could have 6 range as an attacker. Go figure, right? Alright, so that's the weapon. Next then is the armor. The armor, from what I remember, doesn't seem to be anything special at all. It's just a quite a generic armor in my opinion. The plate mail effect, the ancient plate armor effect is that it increases defense by 2% and fixed damage taken is decreased by 2%. So at level 50, it's a 10% defense increase and 10% fixed damage reduction. Really nothing particularly special about it. Next is the helmet, the frostfire crown. So I actually picked up, I did summon on this banner, full disclosure. Um, <laughs> I'll talk about that later. But what the Frostcrawler Crown does is that when initiating battle, damage taken is reduced by 2%, and it also provides a magic defense increase of 2%. So at level 50, 10% magic defense increase, and damage taken is reduced by 10% when initiating battle. It's for Holy class, Mage class, and Demon class characters. Well, Holy Class, Mage Class, and Demon Class characters should all pretty much be using Tenyo's headdress if you have them. So it's a rather useless helm, in my opinion. Last but not least, accessories. So I actually did manage to get an Insidious Pendant. And the Insidious Pendant, the reason you want it for Omega is simple. This is an accessory that provides both attack and skill increase, and all stats increase by 5%. So skill also gets an increase there. Furthermore, when entering battle, crit chance is increased by 1%, so at level 50, it would be a 5% increase. Not much else needs to be said. It's the only SSR accessory that provides a skill increase, plus it's Omega's best in slot. The thing, the thing of the, that needs to be mentioned about this, of course, is first, oh, for PvE content, Omega already has enough skill to hit and to hit the enemy leaders anyways, right? You'll have three times skill over the enemy with 304 skill plus 93, the way I have it, for example. And so you don't need it for PvE content. And for PvP content, this all assumes you're going to use Omega in your box, which is... Uh, <laughs> not that many people do. So, yeah. That's why this banner is really really luck based okay the equipment banner so you can see for example i have no vouchers left and no crystals left and actually yesterday i had around 41 vouchers and i think 6000 to 7000 crystals so if you calculate that out i had around I had, I think, close to 120 draws in total. Okay. I think it was closer to 7,000 crystals. So basically, I did 120 draws 
between yesterday and today, I did get the Insidious Pendant. I think I spent 60 draws. I got lucky here. I spent 60 draws and got the Insidious Pendant. The other 60 draws were actually me going crazy and drawing, doing a last minute attempt on the Reen and Ariane Rod banner. And I ended up getting two additional copies of Reen. Or sorry, two additional copies of Ariane Rod, which really screws up my plans. So I'll mention this more in next week's Nitro setup video. But um, this both draws were impulse draws. Like I really shouldn't have done them, but I did. Um, the most annoying thing about all this though is I actually forgot to record the summoning this morning on the Transcenders Legacy. I had yeah, I had my streaming program open. I thought I clicked the record button, but I didn't. So I was doing the summons and just didn't record it, unfortunately. All right, so that's everything I wanted to say in this video because that covers both events as well as the new addition in the store skin, which is the soldier sprites. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you found this information useful to you. Nitro out.